if there's one thing that's clear above all in Ontario politics right now, it's that Lisa McLeod has no place within cabinet. Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. You know, I've been covering this Ford government from a lot of angles. You know, my biggest one being that, you know, they've won power based off a false narrative. They sold this idea that they were here for Ontarians to run a relatively centrist government. They weren't going to cut services. They weren't going to fire a single frontline worker. And yet we know that on issue after issue after issue, they either spoke misleadingly or outright lied to Ontarians. And that's why they won their election. People would have never voted for what they're getting right now, certainly not giving them a majority. So there's a lot of things we could talk about when we talk about this Ford government. But one thing I think that needs to be kind of hammered out for sure is that Lisa McLeod has no place within the Ford cabinet, no place within a cabinet period, because she's shown time after time after time to be petty and to be a liability. And that has no place within a cabinet serving the people of this province, be it in a conservative party or any other party. And so McLeod is in a very interesting position because at least initially, she was part of Ford's team. She was part of the team Ford built to give him legitimacy. It included other strong women like Christine Elliott and Catherine Mulrooney who were there to kind of give people peace of mind, to let them know that all the concerns they had about Ford aside, he had a good team of experienced and well-balanced politicians and experts that were going to keep him on the straight and narrow, which is something that a lot of people had concerns with. Even people who, who sort of like Doug Ford maybe think that, you know, maybe he's not the, the most disciplined guy. So having that team around him would give you the best of both worlds. You'd have Doug Ford and what you believe in his kind of demeanor, but with a traditional politician team around him. But McLeod has failed to provide that. And rather than be this calm and steadying influence on the government, she's become a public liability time after time after time. And there's three broad cases that highlight her failure from a professional and personal perspective. The biggest one above all is her handling of the autism file when she was Minister of Children and Social Services and what have you. She held that portfolio and she undertook what was seen by people with autism and by the families of those with autism as a series of brutal cuts and restructurings that left a lot of people without the services they need. And more than that, we could spend the whole video talking about that. It wasn't just the cuts. It was the fact that the cuts were in direct contradiction with what the government ran on which is that they didn't run on making significant cuts to essential public services. They said that if anything, Doug Ford said, we're going to expand those public services because we're going to cut the fat and we're going to cut the gravy train and there's going to be more money for the things Ontarians need, you know, day to day. That's what that was the message from this government. So Lisa McLeod undertook this plan that was in discordance with the actual electoral mandate of the government. So she's already on, you know, rough footing there. But bigger than that, was how she held organizations almost to a form of ransom. In the run-up to her introduction of the plan, she went to key stakeholders, and I'll put up an article that talks about this. She went to key stakeholders and said to them, I want you to say positive things about my plan. I need that support to sell this plan to the public. And if you don't, you may just have a bad four years ahead of you. Now, is that a threat? I don't know if legally that's a threat, I'm not a lawyer, but what I can say is people construed that as threatening in nature, and they felt that they had a choice, either back Lisa McLeod's plan, which had not been fully shown to them by that point, and which once released would clearly be in opposition to their objectives, or make an enemy out of this Ford majority government, and that was the choice put before them. So not only is Lisa McLeod in her capacity as the minister responsible for this autism restructuring plan, not only is she putting forth a plan that's unpopular and I feel discordant with the original mandate of the government, but she's sort of using her leverage and her power to pressure groups into legitimizing the plan you know, for the public. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Lisa McLeod, if you want support for your plan, make a damn good plan and people will support it. Don't do that. And there's other things too. Another one that was fairly recent is Lisa McLeod put out an article, kind of, I can't believe it's sincere. I think it's, a, it's a cynical piece, but she made the argument that the NDP is wrong 
and that they should listen to Tommy Douglas, the legacy of Tommy Douglas, because he knew what fiscal conservatism was all about, and Doug Ford is just doing what Tommy Douglas would do. That's absolute balderdash. 100%. First of all, Doug Ford is not fiscally responsible. The deficit is ballooning under his leadership because he's given away reckless tax cuts to those who don't need tax cuts. But further to that, Tommy Douglas ran balanced budgets, but through you know government planning and through fair taxation and through good management of the government. Doug Ford displays none of those. And to, to, to make the connection between Tommy Douglas and Doug Ford was absurd, and people noted it as absurd. But where this really kind of plays down is how Kiefer Sutherland responded when he said to, to Ford and kind of indirectly to, to McLeod as the original drafter of that piece, he basically said, look, the reality is my grandfather is nothing like you people, and you shouldn't use his legacy. And that, yeah, he believed in balanced budgets, but from a fundamentally different ideological and, and political perspective than you. And, and again, I, I'll note this again, Doug Ford doesn't believe in balanced budgets. There's no way he does. But it was how McLeod responded. The story probably could have died there. You know, Kiefer Sutherland sort of owned Ford and McLeod. They could have slunk away and let the story die. But McLeod had to make a snarky tweet about Kiefer Sutherland's show Designated Survivor, which is, of course, a show where he becomes president because there's a big terrorist attack and it's half West Wing, half 24 in some ways. It's not a bad show, actually. But she says, you know, well, it's a lot easier playing a, a politician on TV than it is being one in real life. And it came off as super petty, as super snarky, as super salty, and it got one of the biggest ratios I have ever seen from a Canadian politician that I can recall on Twitter. If you've seen a bigger one, let me know in the comments. Because I can't remember one. And, well, of course, that's not nearly as bad as the autism file. Certainly not. A, a Twitter fight with a, you know, you know, a major, you know, wealthy actor versus trying to, you know, take the support away and blackmail people with autism and people who support those with autism. Certainly one's worse than the other. But Lisa McLeod showed she had no judgment there as a cabinet minister and a politician. She let the story continue and continued to make her government look bad in the process. That showed a lack of acumen and common sense. And most recently, Lisa McLeod went to a Rolling Stones concert. And she saw Eugene Melnick there. Now, Eugene Melnick is the owner of the Ottawa Senators. Melnick is not a popular man. He's seen as part of what ails the Ottawa Senators both on and off the ice. But in any case, Lisa McLeod went a bit too far when she said that, you know, she was the Minister of Culture and Sport, she was his minister, and she allegedly called him a piece of the S-word. I won't say it because YouTube doesn't like when you swear. Um, I don't need to say it. You know what I'm talking about. She basically insulted him at this concert. Some sources suggest she may or may not have been intoxicated, although that's, that's an allegation, and that she basically made it all about her and how he needed to do a better job, and she was commanding him as a government official to be a better manager of a hockey team. And again, that's not nearly as bad as you know mistreating children and families dealing with autism, but it, again, it shows a lack of judgment, a lack of, of character, a lack of common sense, and it, it, it really hammers home the point that she's not cut to be a minister. And this was in her demoted position. After her abject failure on the autism file, she was bumped down the culture and sport. And I don't, I don't think that culture and sport is unimportant, but it's a lower profile ministerial position. But Doug Ford gave her another chance, and she's sort of already blown it. it she's only been a, it, it, I don't even know how long it's been. A month? Maybe a little bit more? I don't know. She's already kind of blown that file. So whether it's children with autism, or actors who are the grandsons of Tommy Douglas, or billionaire hockey owners, Lisa McLeod knows how to embarrass herself in front of all three of those groups. And it's really troubling. And we can all have a good laugh about it, but it says something about you know, the state of our cabinet, the state of our government in Ontario, that this person keeps getting the trust of the Ford regime to remain in cabinet. And I think that's absurd. Again, going back to the top, Lisa McLeod was supposed to be a steadying, sober influence on the Ford government. 
But she's made herself the story time after time after time and almost never in a good way. And you got to feel if you're Doug Ford that that's not what you have Lisa and McLeod in cabinet for. She's not there to be the story. And as we talked about on this channel, there's a narrative out there that Doug Ford's five month, you know, hiatus going into October is done primarily to protect Andrew Shear's chances in the federal election. Because whenever Ford does something, whenever they pass a policy or do anything, you know, in terms of governing in this province, it hurts the federal conservatives because people tie the brands together and they say, well, I don't like what Ford's doing. I probably won't like what Shear's doing. So some people have suggested Doug Ford's helping Andrew Shear by basically trying to do nothing. But with scandals still piling up, even during the summer break, four remains in people's minds. Whether it's the whole Dean French being fired or resigning or whatever you want to call it, and whether it's patronage and nepotism case after patronage and nepotism case, or whether it's Lisa McLeod continuing to, to generate bad press for the government. It just goes to show that they can't even get out of the way when they're not sitting in Queen's Park. And Lisa McLeod is a big part of that. When she's calling billionaire hockey owners names. When she continues to anger the children and families of those dealing with autism, even though she's not the minister of that file anymore, they're still protesting her because they know it was under her watch that this mess started. And whether it's just picking stupid fights on social media that should have never been picked in the first place, it's clear that if the Ford government has any good sense, that, that Lisa McLeod will be out of cabinet. Look, I'm not a Ford supporter. The, the more self-owns that that government can give itself, the more I'll take it because, I mean, I don't want to see them succeed. But if I'm giving political advice, I'm telling Doug Ford that there's no reason to have Lisa McLeod in cabinet. She hasn't demonstrated any kind of real value. She's made mess after mess after mess. She's made the story about herself and not in a good way. And there are other people you can put into cabinet. You have backbenchers. You have other young women. You have a few young conservative women who have been elected who maybe could be given a cabinet role. If you're worried about, you know, having not having enough women in cabinet, there are young conservative women that could be given that cabinet seat. I understand there's all these concerns and that McLeod is a big name in the PCs and that she was part of that original team that gave Ford his legitimacy during that election, but she is undeniably a liability right now. And if Ford has any sense, Lisa McLeod will be out of his cabinet at the very least by the time they return to sitting in October. Hey everybody, thanks again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you like, comment, and subscribe. Doing so helps to spread the message to let people know that here on YouTube, we have progressive voices covering Canadian and Ontario politics and offering a fresh perspective that sometimes isn't available in the mainstream media. And for the same reason, I would appreciate your support on Patreon. Again, support there improves the quality and quantity of content on this channel, and it helps to build a progressive perspective on a YouTube platform that has been for far too long dominated by right-of-center voices. So guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.